Hey guys, my name is Ronnie Brady. I'm a member of the Tempest Debate Team in the LD Free Resource Committee. And this is my lecture on how to write a case for Lincoln Douglas. Um, so let's get started. What is a case? It is the presentation of your first or initial arguments. This is what we read in our constructive speeches or our case speeches where we simply read our case off of our computers. It's pre-prepared and yeah, it's our initial argument made in the round. So your philosophy is most often introduced immediately before arguments in your framework. And it's normally typed in Word predecessor, Microsoft Word and Google Docs, the most popular. Some, it's good to have these common so softwares on the debates, especially as virtual debate is becoming more common to have like a common software in case you need to send cases over or any of, any of that. It's always good to have like, a, um, use one of these programs is what I would recommend because it is so, um, they are so widely used throughout Alabama and the national circuit. And onto the structure of our cases. So I affirm or negate the resolution. That's the AF side or the AF affirmative side and the neg side or the negative side. Um, so AF, yes, so agrees, negative, disagrees. And onto the, the um, so that's where you have your one-liner at the top saying, I affirm, negate the resolution, resolved, blah, blah, blah. Or in the United States, there ought to be a federal jobs guarantee for this topic. Um, so yeah. Um, and then next is the definitions of, so that's where you're going to define um, the word choice in the resolution, anything that could be debatable, ambiguous, or help your side. We always define ought, which um, recurs in the resolutions for Lincoln Douglas debate, and like the central point of um, of the resolution, like example for November, December 2020, would be we would define federal jobs guarantee and odds because those are the two debatable terms like you wouldn't really debate over like United States or like in or small articles so yes and then the third part would be observations um in the in your case and that's just um the like the setting up the premise of the round and it's also setting up your arguments of the framework and then so the frameworks are the values um most commonly morality, justice, et cetera, and they value criterion, utilitarianism, deontology, et cetera. Of course, it wouldn't be phrased like that. It would be like what you wouldn't say my value criterion is utilitarianism. You'd say my value criterion is maximizing um, but net benefits or, you know, like that verb form that we use um, referred to the framework lecture, if you're not familiar with that. And then our fourth part, fourth part would be contentions. Um, so yes, that's the structure of the case. And so on the affirmation or negation of the topic, let's do these. Okay. Um, so on the affirmation and negation of the topic, traditionally a case starts with I affirm the resolution that insert the resolution there and or I negate the resolution that insert in the resolution there. So that's your statement of affirmation or negation at the top of the statement that sets up what side you're on and you know yeah, basically just traditional for every case. And, do you def and definitions define potentially controversial words from the resolution. The philosophy is your framework, the philosophical lens through which the judge should consider which contentions are stronger compared to your oppon opponent's contentions. And then the contentions are the big umbrella arguments and they're often sub points that fall under, there are sub points that can fall under that larger umbrella. But remember your contentions always link back into your framework or the philosophy that you preempted this round with. And um, yeah, so definitions define keywords. States also ban lethal autonomous weapons. You can define states. I already brought up the example of November, December topic, the current topic, but yeah, if you wanna use this other topic, um, as an example, so states should all be countries because there is different different definitions of states. Some people like only think of strictly think of them with like the 50 US states or like what defines the states they have to be like sovereign nations or all of that. So any ambiguous definitions that could be debatable you ought to define. So states ought, um, I already explained that ought is linked to the framework. We always like choose um, one good definition um, for the definition of all, moral obligation normally means that you're you valuing morality. Um, so, and then the lethal autonomous weapons, that's like 
the, the big core part, you know, I compared like that to the federal jobs guarantee for this topic, like the big core part that you're actually debating about in the resolution, you also want to find a good definition for that, which isn't going to be like just on any dictionary website, it's going to have to, you're going to have to look to a good, some warranting authors to get a definition of the key, like lethal autonomous weapons or federal jobs guarantee of the key subject of the resolution. Um, so yeah, examples, I offer the following definitions. Ban, officially illegally prohibit lethal causing or able to cause death. Um, so that's your phrase. I mean, say I offer the following definition for clarification or I define, if you want to keep it short. Um, so yeah, and then on to philosophy, the third part of your case. So from the flowchart earlier, the, uh, just to restate the philosophical lens through which the judge con should consider which contentions are stronger compared to your op opponent's contentions. Um, for now, just know that LD philosophies are largely grouped into morality or justice. Um, we'll get to the framework lecture later, but yeah. So framework, the first component is value. This is the ultimate truth or goal or ideal that you think should be upheld in every round. Morality and justice are very common um, just because they're very arching. Um, they're kind of subjective to what you define them as, but also morality is like a governing concept and justice is a governing concept. So value is what you're trying to uphold in that round. You're gonna need a broad governing concept for that. So morality and justice are the two most common values in Lincoln Douglas debate. So you would phrase that in your case as in today's round, I value morality because X. Um, you may not need a significant justification for values which are usually less complex and less debated than value criterion. Um, and generally, you would, you would want a source. Um, Stanford Encyclopedia like Philosophy is a good one for values. Um, that's what I always use for morality. So, yeah. And then the second component of framework is the value criterion. It can also be referred to as a standard of the round, and it's essentially a tool or method by which to uphold the value. It's considered a big weighing mechanism, and 90% of the time, it's the most important aspect of the round, and most judges would also agree upon this fact that the value criterion debate, a good substantive and like clashing value criterion debate, um, would make that round like make that round um, very thorough and also very centered around this one this one aspect of it. And the judges ought to let everything in the frame of winning the value criterion. So yeah, um, whoever wins a value debate like the judge is expected to like assume that mantle, to assume that lens of the value criterion, of the winning value criterion and look, evaluate the round based on that. And you need plenty of justifications for your value criterion. So contentions are AKA the points, the arguments of your case. This is the body of your case and you usually spend most of the speech time on AF or longer cases. Um, the contentions like the paragraph format of this, you have your tagline, which is, um, or normally you would say like contention one and then the short like title of your contention. But then the tagline after that is a short and sweet title that makes it easy to remember. And um, so like contention one, public health and tagline would be like, where you would relate it to um, the, which, where you would relate it to the resolution. So you would say um, doing illegal drugs should be a matter of public health and not criminal justice because for all these reasons. So that's like a summary of what the card, the evidence that you're going to present. So the link is the middleman of your case. It proves how voting after neg will lead to X impact. Um, and then actually, I don't think this is the actual order. So the order would be tagline. Um, or contention title, public contention one, public health, or tagline would be the sentence describing or outlining your argument, and that was that. And then um, next would be the warrant, which is the body, the card that we're going to show you how to cut in a second. But the warrant is the article source that you cut out, and then next comes the link, which is linking this back to your value criterion or back to the specific decide that you're defending. So once you give the evidence, I know it's hard to do without a visual example, but we're gonna get this on the next slide. But once you give your evidence, you give a link back to your framework and your side, and then um, the impact is why that contention matters. Ex example, nuclear war, poverty, death, the breach of, um, and then et cetera. 
So contention example. Contention one, innocent lives saved. So that would be <clears throat> innocent lives saved would be the tagline or it would be the contention title. And then sub point A, lethal autonomous weapons killed by sailors in addition to targets. So innocent lives saved is like, that can be a phrase that can, this title of the contention can be a phrase. However, the sub point A, this is the tagline, um, is a more full sentence. You can see it's more developed, but it's still short and sweet and good summary point. Doe 20 wrote, so that's where you're going to source it. This is where the warrant comes in, blah, 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 everything that the warrant says. And then after that, you're going to have that clear link and impact of, as to why your evidence matters. Um, so let's move on to uh, more technical, like not technical stuff about the round. I mean, about setting up the case and this is the status quo or the premise of debate. The entire debate is based on changing the status quo, which is the current situation. The AF supports the resolution, which changes something. And then wants to deny the resolution, stopping the change. If the change isn't as good as the status quo, AF has no impetus voting for them. This does not mean the NEG has to defend the status quo. So AF cases, um, based on exclu exclusivity and inherency, resolution can't be implemented in the status quo. This stops the NEG from just saying, okay, do the AF without following the resolution. Um, so yeah, that's just inherent. That's something that the NEG, the AF doesn't have to say. It's something that's like, a consensus of all debaters. And the impact is that the, pro the problems that exist in the status quo or the neg world can be solved in the AF world. So re requires proof of current deficiencies, like something that's wrong with the status quo. So you're going to need to present the issues. And then next part of the AF is the solvency um, about basically how the passing the resolution that you argue for is actually going to help those deficiencies. Um, so topicality link, you always need to have that link that proves how your case is tied to the resolution to ensure it's topical. And night cases or later traditional night cases argue for the status quo. So such as they can prove that the status quo has positives that would go away in the app world, such as here's something good right now, um, judge the app obviously by implementing the resolution gets rid of this blah, blah, more harms in the AF world or the NEG world, et cetera. So they prove that the AF world has unintended harms that are worse than the status quo, or just to disprove their whole case. NEG speeches are shorter because your seven minute speech is also a rebuttal. Um, if you don't remember case time, so six minutes for the affirmative case, so the, the AF constructive or one AC, six minutes, that um, the AF has six minutes to read their entire case. And then um, there's cross-examination and then the neg only has seven minutes to do their constructive along with a rebuttal. So they have to proportion their time better. Um, I mean, technically could, you could use six minutes for your case and that would be an equal case time. So however, you'd only one minute for a rebuttal. So usually it's recommended to do three to four minutes for case and three to four minutes on rebuttal. So neg speeches are shorter and um, contains contentions or and or disadvantages Disadvantages is just the disadvantage to do the resolution um, and contentions, again, are your points or subpoints of your case. Um, so this is an example of an evidence card um, or the warrant section of contentions. So this tagline right here sub raises the card. The number of civilian deaths in the US wars alone is staggeringly high and massively undercounted. So this example of a card was written by Murtaza Hussein, um, this reporter, the citation that you don't read when you're reading like, your case aloud. Um, you would only read the la author's last name and the, and the last two digits of the year, or assuming that it's written in 2000, that's when you read. Um, so just an example, if I was reading this case out loud, if this card was in front of me, the number of civilian deaths in the US wars alone is staggeringly high and massively undercounted. Hussein, 18. In the post-1911 war on terror, blah, 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 go into the card. So um, yeah, you just want to have the author and the source in front of you in case it's asked to cross-size or checked by a judge. Um, but when you're reading your case, you only read the author's last name and the year and um, have the URL in case you need to pull it up. And so yeah, this is a card that is cut. I think there's a separate lecture on card cutting, but um, 
you copy and paste what section of the article that you find that you want. And of course, I mean, six minutes speeches, you want to present as much evidence material as you can. So you're not going to read every single thing. Um, you're going to cut this card is what we call it in debate. So that is underlining or bolding or highlighting or whatever way or capitalizing or making the font bigger, um, whatever way um, helps you get point out the most important or what you want to read in the round out of the card and simply maximizing those so you read them. However, you still want to keep everything else in the card so that you're not violating evidence ethics and like restructuring a whole other article that is separate from what the actual article said. So um, yeah, that's just how you cut a card. You shorten it down, but you have to make sure that it still flows like the Senate. So in the post 9-11 war on terror, the US wars in three was, okay, maybe this wasn't. In the post-1911 war on terror, the U.S. wars in three countries, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, are 2,400,000 civilians, and the number of direct deaths is running into the millions. So let's talk about this sentence. The number of direct deaths is running into the millions. That's a clear sentence right there, and you're still getting the bare bones of what the original sentence intended to say. You see that, that there's these dashes right here. Those resulting from disease displacement and the loss of critical infrastructure is, like, obviously, whoever cut this card um, decided that they didn't need that part. So they cut it out, however, the sentence is still coher coherent and it still gets the point across that, that they needed. So yeah, that's how you cut a card. That's the evidence you present in your contentions. And I believe that, yes, that is all I have for my pacing lecture today, but thank you for watching. And remember, if you have any questions, please visit the Tempest Debate website and contact any members of our team.